Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Good morning. I'm Jeff Ross. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Roswell United Methodist Church, and it's good to be with you in this time of worship. Our scripture passage comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. An inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for your word, for our time together, and pray your blessing uh, that you will work in your spirit into our hearts and into our lives through these words. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, this is the Sunday after Easter, and so it's, uh, uh, everybody's still kind of caught up in the Easter uh, phenomena and excitement and joy. And so I thought it'd be good to uh, check in with Peter uh, because he's such a central character in the whole Easter story, the whole New Testament. And, uh, but we're going to pick up with Peter uh, a few years down the road. Uh, he's had some time to process everything and look at everything. But the neat thing is we uh, have read this passage from 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 is that he's still so excited. And so let's, uh, let's review a little bit uh, about Peter's life. Uh, he was a fisherman, just living the life of a fisherman, and Jesus finds him, and Jesus calls him. And at that point, his life does a crazy turn, uh, and uh, things happen that he never expected. And it appears through the stories and what we know of Peter that he feels like he was blessed. He, we, we, we feel like that he's amazed by what happened, that he feels fortunate that Jesus in his life have intersected. Um, 
He was one of the most trusted of the disciples. And in fact, he was a remarkable person. And, it, and I wonder, even when he writes this years later, uh, does he have any idea of what a pivotal character he was? Uh, does he have any idea what his legacy uh, is going to be? But one thing's for sure is that Peter f still feels this sense of excitement and joy about what Jesus did with him, through him, uh, and uh, 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 where all that is headed. And so, um, but there was a, the, and maybe the reason for that is because of uh, what happens in, uh, in part of Jesus's ministry. Um, he becomes really close to Jesus, and then in the last hours, he denies that he ever even knew Jesus. When Jesus needs him the most, Peter's humanity kicked in and overtakes him, and he cowers to the carnal temptations that plague us all. He has to feel despair. He has to feel like he squandered a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, but he doesn't have to despair for very long. Because Jesus finds him back in the boat fishing and in the famous story of uh, Peter, do you love me? Uh, Jesus restores him to faith and good standing. So here in 1 Peter 3 through 9, we find him uh, excited about this second chance that he's got and how he's living out his life in response to that. So he says, praise to God. His great mercy, he has given us a living hope. He has given us, an, and this is key, he has given us an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. And it's kept in heaven for us. And so that's what I want to look at today, this idea of inheritance. Um, and, uh, and when I say that word, inheritance, and maybe when we read it in the scripture uh, a minute ago, uh, your thought went to economics uh, and not of an inheritance in heaven. Because that's how we typically use that, uh, that phrase or that idea that inheritance is something uh, economic. And that's because so many of us are focused on the here and now and not on uh, what's to come in heaven. And that's going to be the difference that we're going to look at between Peter's mindset, his whole character, uh, and typically where you and I are, because we're trapped in some of the trappings of this life. Uh, and Peter has, because of the experience he had with Jesus, has sort of moved past that to something beyond. Uh, it probably comes out of the conversations he had with Jesus, the relationship that he had with Jesus. But in, in our life, in this life, when we think of inheritance or we think in terms of retirement, and I, I want to use that uh, uh, language interchangeably, once we get to a certain age in life, we think of little else. Life is a, a quest to fill up our basket with the eggs, our nest eggs, or uh, putting all our eggs in, in one basket. And so we, we live our life as uh, in that quest. How are we going to do that? And so maybe we start out at an early age and we're not able to put many eggs in that basket because we, we just don't have a lot of funds to do that. And so maybe we drop in a dollar or two or put, uh, get a CD or something, but we're beginning to put something in that inheritance or retirement uh, basket. Uh, and then over time, maybe we're able to double up with that. Uh, maybe uh, something good happens to us. We win some sort of prize and we're able uh, to put more. Uh, maybe if you're smart enough uh, to invest, you can uh, uh, use compound interest uh, as your friend and, and more eggs are put in that basket. Uh, maybe... Uh, uh, you, you get an inheritance of your own. Somebody in your family leaves or gives you some money, uh, and that adds a lot at once. Um, maybe you uh, sell a business or a house, and you're able to put a big uh, egg in that basket. Um, 
Or maybe you're never able to put a lot in. And so you do what you can over time. Maybe you're fortunate enough to have a pension program or, or some help in contributing to uh, the nest egg that you're trying to build. Um, maybe uh, it's a 401 plan at your work. Maybe uh, it's social security. Uh, maybe it's uh, something else. Um, but over time, all of us are trying to put enough away so that when we do retire, um, we, we have a couple things. One, enough to take care of ourselves, but also maybe something to leave uh, to family or friends or causes that we believe strongly in. And so uh, I want us to look at, the, at sort of the difference in the mindset as we approach this passage from where we typically are and where Peter is. And so this is kind of what our focus is. It's on this life and, and right now and the here and now and trying to save and build enough so that we don't really have to worry uh, as we get older. But we find that uh, as much as we try to build up so that we don't worry, in fact, that's just about all we, we do. We guard it. We check on it. Uh, we check on it uh, sometimes two, three, four, five, six, ten times a day. Uh, will it be enough? How will I manage it or maintain it or grow it? What if I lose it? What if I outlive my money? Uh, so... Uh, in response to those questions, um, we, we employ bankers and accountants and actuaries and a whole plethora of people to help soothe our anxiety. Uh, but it, it does little good with each newscast, with each economic downturn, with each war or threat of war. We cringe at the possibility that our nest egg uh, might... Uh, dwindle away or tip over or, or some catastrophe might happen. And so uh, again, uh, when we think of inheritance, when we think of retirement, we're thinking in terms of what we can do for ourselves right now. We're, we're not usually typically thinking of our inheritance as Peter talks about it in heaven. Uh, and, but Peter's focus is on that. And there, there may be a couple of good reasons. Well, one, in biblical times, fewer people were able to retire. The number of people who made it to old age was a, a lot smaller. But also, retirement hadn't been invented yet. Uh, in Jesus' day, in, in those days, uh, it was customary for you to work until you just dropped, uh, regardless of your age. Now, retirement ideas have been in existence for a while. Even in Jesus' day, uh, Caesar Augustus uh, offered Roman legionnaires uh, a retirement package um, for serving in uh, the wars. In the 1500s, Parliament in England established a pension for soldiers. Uh, in 1875, was the first private sector retirement uh, uh, account, and it was set up by American Express. In 1878, the New York City established a general retirement plan for police officers. And so it's, it's mind-boggling, but it, was until, it wasn't until the 1800s, really the late 1800s, before retirement plans began to develop anywhere. In 1883, Germany was under uh, all kinds of internal chaos and uh, Otto von Bismarck announced that if he was reelected, he would pay a pension to any German uh, over the age of 65. Well, some folks say that was brilliant because this is before penicillin, so there weren't many people living past 65. So Bismarck could do that without much threat of uh, breaking the bank. So all that's kind of interesting, kind of fun. But it's different from what Peter is talking about. And it's as we come off of Easter 
and the story of Jesus rising from the dead and the Holy Spirit descending and, and breathing this power into each of us, the temptation is to think that, okay, we've experienced that and now we can just live in that power and nothing will uh, go on. And, and that's not what you see out of Peter. Uh, Peter's not looking to now and today. He's not worried about this life. He's focused on the next. And so I wanted to illustrate that today with this second basket. Uh, and so I, I want to kind of help us to try to think that in this life, a lot of us are so focused on this basket that the basket that Peter is talking about is empty. We, we, we get in our head that we've got to do so much for ourselves and for our family and, and uh, we've got to be prepared and we've got to put things away and we've got to work really hard and we've got to be so absorbed with this life and those things and material things that we neglect the opportunity and the responsibility to put anything in this basket. And that's what Peter is talking about uh, initially, but then as he goes on in the end of this first chapter, talks about it more. Peter's rejoicing that his ticket is, is stamped and that that ticket to heaven uh, is, it, it won't perish, it won't spoil, and it won't fade, and it's kept in heaven. Uh, as theologian M.C. Hammer would say, you can't touch this. Peter has been touched by grace. And, and if you think about that and, and look at Peter's experience, it's no wonder that the cares and struggles seemingly of this world are of no matter to him. Uh, Peter had the great fortune of being in the right place at the right time by being selected by Jesus to be a disciple, kind of rising to the top uh, of that group, being trusted by Jesus, being forgiven a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. Um, and so as Peter looks at the good fortune of his life, he's not as concerned about the things he accumulates or gets here. He's more concerned with telling us about the, the wonders and the glory and the mercies uh, that await us. And again, Peter had the opportunity to have long conversations with Jesus about that. Romans 8, Paul talks a little bit about this too, and he says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing in this life, no trial, no struggle, no lack of, no pain, nothing can separate us from the love of God. So Peter and his reward uh, is focused on an eternal mindset. Uh, Peter is laying, for him, laying up for himself treasures in heaven. Uh, Peter would be investing in this basket and not so much in that one. And he invites us to look at life that way as well. I'm sure that Peter was prudent and he was practical. I'm sure that he paid the mortgage on his house. I'm sure that he took care of his parents. Um, I'm sure that he'd be a little amazed at us at how much we worry about the eggs in this basket. Jesus talked about treasures as well. And his, his advice to us was seek first the kingdom of God. And if you do that, everything else will fall into its rightful place. Focus on this basket, and this basket will work itself out. In the rest of the first chapter of 1 Peter, Peter kind of steers us in the direction he would like us to go in. And he says, therefore, set your hope on grace. Don't conform to this world. Be holy in all that you do. Work for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver and gold 
that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. So, love one another. One of the ways that I've heard this expressed is by R.L. Sharp in a little poem called A Stumbling Block or Stepping Stone. And I'll end with this. Isn't it strange how princes and kings and clowns that caper in sawdust rings and common people like you and me are builders for eternity. Each is given a list of rules, a shapeless mass, a bag of tools, and each must fashion ere life is flown a stumbling block or a stepping stone. Let us pray. God, as we celebrate and still bask in the glory of, of Easter, uh, we recognize that everything's not done, that we still have work to do. We still have a faith to live out. And, uh, and a world around us depends on us living out that faith faithfully. Um, it's so easy to get entangled in the things of the world. And, and there are things we have to do and decisions we have to make and bills we have to pay. But God, help us not to get so absorbed in that quest that we neglect the joy and the hope and the need for living our life in faith with you. Guide us, God, as we seek to find a balance, as we seek to find our place in the world that you've given us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.